Hey everybody, it's time for a little bit of a screencast on drawing Lewis dot structures for actual molecules. Don't worry, we're not going to deal with anything as complex as what you see here with this image. But I do hope that after you watch this video, you'll have a basic idea about how to draw some simple molecular Lewis dot structures. Let's get started. First thing, I'm going to go through a series of rules with you, and we're going to use a common chemical as an example. And just for the sake of this screencast, we're going to use nitrogen trifluoride, NF3. Whenever you're starting to draw a Lewis dot structure for a molecule, first step, figure out how many valence electrons you have available. So that means you'll have to be able to determine how many valence electrons nitrogen gives us, and how many valence electrons each of the three fluorine atoms provides. Now, based on this location in the periodic table, nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each fluorine provides seven. So since there's three of those fluorines, we count that seven three times. So seven times three gives us 21. And then we add to that the five from nitrogen. Now, the number that we get, we have to keep in mind this 26 valence electrons. We have to make sure that our Lewis dot structure that we draw has exactly 26 valence electrons represented in it. No more, no less. Let's carry on. Next step, we got to figure out what the central atom is. And most of the time you can figure this out just by looking at the particular formula. Now remember our formula was NF3. Uh, if you have a situation like this where there's only one of something, then everything else is going to be bound to that thing that there is one of. So in our case, we're going to have nitrogen, and then each of the three fluorine atoms is going to be bound to that nitrogen central atom. So now we start to see a couple of differentiating terms used. So the central atom being the thing that most of the bonded atoms are attached to, and then the bonding atoms, those are the pieces that are attached to the central atom. All right, so we've got the central atom. We know that we have to show... 26 valence electrons, and we've figured out our basic orientation. Next step is to start to make some covalent bonds. So to do that, we start with our structure that we came up with from our last step. Start initially by drawing a single bond between each of the bonding atoms and the central atom. Now you notice this single line that we use. We've got to remember that represents a pair of electrons, a bonding pair. One contributed from nitrogen, one contributed from fluorine, making that pair up. So right now we've shown a total of six valence electrons. Now remember, we have to show 26 valence electrons. So, so far we still have 20 more to show. Let's see how we rationalize how we deal with the rest, those additional 20. We're going to do that by taking advantage of the fact that we know most of these compounds are composed of atoms that prefer to have a completely filled valence shell and that valence shell most of the time can be completely filled with an octet or eight valence electrons. So we're going to use the remaining electrons and just for a refresher we had 26 valence electrons in total we've only shown six so we need to look at each individual atom in this compound and figure out how many electrons it has to have. We have to stop though once we've drawn 26 so here we go. This first fluorine on the left it only has two valence electrons around it. It needs six more. So that's going to take the form of three lone pairs. Now it has eight. This fluorine, same situation. It needs six electrons. In this case, they're all taking the form of lone pairs of electrons. The fluorine on the right, same story. Now before we go any further, let's do a quick check because I was just drawing dots. Let's make sure that we're accounting and staying true to this 26 valence electron uh, maximum. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Now we've got two left, so notice the second sentence. Use remaining electrons to complete the octet for the central atom. There we go. Now, we're not done yet, because we can come across situations where we might run out of electrons or we might have um, too many. Um, so what do we do with those situations? First, to check your work, we take our answer and we ensure the octet rule is satisfied and that the proper number of electrons are shown. So in this case, this fluorine atom, if we look at it, the way to count how many electrons it has available to it is to draw a circle around the structure that you've drawn and count the number of dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the bonding pair, remember, counts for two. So that's eight. 
This fluorine also has eight. This fluorine also has eight. Now for nitrogen, remember that all of those bonding pairs are accessible to nitrogen, so it has two, four, six, seven, eight. Everything's good to go. The octet rule is satisfied for all the atoms. We can be confident that this structure is the correct structure for nitrogen trifluoride. Now you can come across situations where you run out of electrons. If you have that situation happen, what you have to do is start to make multiple bonds. Let me show you an example. If we look at carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, first step, figure out how many valence electrons we have available. Carbon gives us four, oxygen gives us six. So that's 10 valence electrons. This one's a little bit easier in terms of central atom because there is no central atom. Both atoms are just bound together. We're going to start by drawing a single bond. Then use the remaining electrons to complete the octet. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This bond counts for two, so that's eight. Now remember, we've only got 10 total that we can show. So I can only draw two more. I have to stop there. When I go and do step five, which is to check and make sure the octet rule is satisfied, I'll notice that for this oxygen atom, the octet rule is satisfied. But for this carbon atom, it's not. That means this structure can't be the correct Lewis dot structure. So we start again. This time, instead of a single bond between carbon and oxygen, we try it using a double bond. And notice double bond is just two lines between those two atoms. So that's four electrons there. That means this oxygen needs four more. So one, two, three, four, two lone pairs. That's a total of eight. I only have two electrons left. They go on carbon. Do my check again. This oxygen, it's got the octet satisfied, no big deal. This carbon, uh-oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This also cannot be the structure. So when a double bond doesn't work, you guessed it, we're gonna try a triple bond. So a triple bond between carbon and oxygen. That's six electrons, we've only got four left two here, that completes the octet for oxygen, and two here, that completes the octet for carbon. So you'll come across these occasionally, but most of the time, the first five steps that I've taught you will do the trick for you. If you want to try a few, here we go. Pause the video, run through the steps, and see what structure you get for chloromethane. If you did it correctly, you should have the following structure. And understand that where you put the hydrogens around the carbon does not matter. Ready for another one? Here's one more. Try carbon disulfide. Pause the video, work your solution, and then unpause the video when you're ready to check your answer. If you did it correctly, you should have carbon in the center, sulfur on either side, and a double bond between each with two lone pairs on each sulfur. Hope this video was helpful. Have a great day.